pleasant good day. This is everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borey. Please can subscribe down below if you enjoy the content to keep us growing to a goal of 250 or more. Let's get into it. Is this going to be the Rochester Americans versus Belleville Senators preview to that series? As this is going to be an interesting series to say the very least. As there's some pretty solid uh, young net minding on both teams in this. And just really good young players in general. Uh, you have Uka Pekka Lykanen. Um, who obviously you would think is going to be in cage for the Rochester Americans. And then when it comes to Belleville Senators, they've got Mads Sogard, who played very good in 35 games with a 908. But forget just the statistics. Looked like he was really starting to come into his own, be more squared to the puck, not relying on his reflexes as much. He's a big kid that takes up most of the net at six freaking seven. Uh, he's a guy that still seems like he has room to grow more, but definitely looks like he could at least be a backup maybe in the future. So, uh, obviously, uh, good for him to be able to uh, show all of that success there. Plus, they also, of course, have Gustafsson, who's a good young goaltender as well. So, Sogar Gustafsson, both very good young netminders in net. Both that are at least going to be backups, I think, at the NHL level. And then when it comes to the Rochester Americans, like I said, I would think it would have to be Lykanen. Um, Obviously, uh, Michael Hauser right now is inactive. He was down with the Cincinnati Cyclones for a minute. Aaron Dell was in a lot of games this year, very good at the AHL level, so they could go with Dell as well. But I feel like the most talented netminder is Lykanen. Um, and if they don't want to go with Lykanen, uh, we'll have to see, but... Uh, either way, this is a good goaltender match. If they go with Del or Lucan, and, and if the Belleville goes with Gustafsson or Sogard, it's going to be a great young goalie matchup. And then you forget just young goalies. You got young skaters galore of potential future NHLers in this one. Uh, Sokolov, Igor Sokolov, killed it this year, uh, showing his uh, pass making ability for the Belleville Senators where he played in most of their games, not all of them. He played in 64 games and was able to put up 50 points, the second-round pick in 2020, developing nicely, developing pretty quickly for a big guy, too. Usually those bigger skaters are sometimes the guys that take a wee bit longer, but he's definitely developing pretty quickly for the Belleville Senators, using his body good. Jake Lucchini, Andrew Agazzino, obviously, who's been around the puck, uh, been around bleh, been around the puck for a while and has obviously been playing for a minute. You have to have those guys on your team as well. He has experience with the Monsters, the Rivermen, the Rampage. Uh he he's been around for a while and you got to have those veterans on your team particularly in the postseason. So he's terrific to have around all these young kids as well. Logan Shaw's also of course been around for a minute. Zach Sessions been in the AHL as he's trying to grow to the NHL level. Maybe he can find that in the Senators organization. You got Reinhardt as well. So I think Lassie Thomas on defense, Leslie on defense. So I think this team is uh, even um, guys like Garnett on defense. Uh, Dylan Heather, uh, or yeah, Heather, Heather Renting, um, I always mispronounce his name. But whenever I watch him out there, he seems like a very good defensive defenseman, a DH. Heather Rington, uh, Dylan Heather Rington, I think is how you say it, uh, number 19 out there for Belleville. Got to watch a lot of their games this year, and he just looks like a stud at being able to get the puck off of the other team's blade and get it going the other direction. And then let's not sugarcoat it here. When it comes to J.J. Paterka and Jack Quinn, two of the best rookies in the damn AHL, uh, Michael Mersch then has been around the block for a while, a perfect veteran to have in the playoff. Um, I think Rochester might play a little bit more of the pounder playoff style, but it's not like Belleville doesn't have guys that do that. Uh, they just they just haven't had to do it as much, I guess is kind of the way that I would put it. But I also think the players on the uh, like the Mershes of the world, for example, kind of just play that game more when it comes to Rochester, but I think this series, honestly, is definitely going to go three. I would be surprised if this series ends in two. I think this has a chance to be some of the most exciting series. you got Ethan Prow on defense, R2 Roosterline, and uh, Quinn and Paterka are definitely going to be NHLers. Laxanen back there on defense, who's developing into a pretty nice player. 
uh, McKin yeah, McKinnis on uh, center court there. Jankowski also is active for them. That's obviously had a good amount of NHL time. Uh, they also have Jimmy Schultz, who's a good defensive defenseman. So you got to have those guys as well in the playoffs. You can't just have push-the-pace guys in the playoffs when it comes to your back end if you really want to have the best chance to win. So I think this is going to be a hell of a series. It's a toss-up. Uh, I feel like this this one's so tough to pick because the teams are basically even. Rochester did play more games. Belleville probably has the better goaltending matchup between having both two really good youngsters in Sogard and Gustafsson compared to the goalie matchup of um, Uka Pekka Lykanen and um, when it comes to Aaron Dell, who's a good league veteran, but I would say they, they might have the goaltending lean. I would just say the Rochester Americans have the defensive lean in terms of overall team defense to the Belleville Senators, but the Belleville Senators also, as I said, I already named them, have great skilled offense with Uchini, Sokolov, Agazino is a veteran, Shaw is a veteran. They have the depth on offense too, a lot of 20-point guys. And then uh, Junette uh, had a 19-point uh, season just missing, and so did Asperat having 18. So, um, And then Wedman as well as a rookie having 17. So I I think this is going to go to three games, but I'm going to lean the Rochester Americans since they have a little bit more veteran uh, veteran guys on their team, and that's the literally similar to why I lean Bridgeport. That's kind of the reason I would be uh, leaning towards them. Casey Fitzgerald's been around the block in this league. Uh, Mitch Elliott's obviously been around the block in this league. So I think for that reason... I'm leaning towards them, but not by much. Elliott's in his third season. He passed 104 games, but he's been around the block, and this is the year he finally got a chance to kind of prove himself, and he's done so. So I feel like he'll have a good playoffs too. So I think I think I'm leaning Rochester American in this one, but it's by like that much of a smidge. Where with Bridgeport, I went with it because of their experience. There's a wee bit more experience on Rochester. They've been here, done that. One of the most historic franchises in the AHL. They have the experience out the wazoo. So I'm going to lean them in this one. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below. Or follow the easiest widget to keep the channel growing to 250 or more by the start of June.